Today we're going to talk about coaches' best and worst attempts at upcycling or upcrafting their own bags. This is a direction they're supposed to be heading according to their new business model, so how well are they doing with it? You'll be the judge, but let me warn you, there are some disasters out there. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Boy do I have some doozies for you today. I'm going to start with the worst bags in my opinion and then I have a few I'm not sure about. They're kind of on the fence. They could be good or bad. And then I'll show you some that I actually really like and I think they did very well with. If you're not familiar with the Coach Reloved line, I talked about this in a recent video about Coach's new business model. I will have that video linked in the description box below. I will also have these bags linked in the description box below. The Reloved line is Coach's attempt or answer to sustainability. And they have four different categories of Reloved. One is they take vintage bags and restore them. Another is they take more contemporary coach bags and restore them, pre-loved bags. Another is that they take their products, take them apart, and make totally new different things out of them. And the one we're talking about today is their upcycled line, where coach artisans create one-of-a-kind items, mostly handbags. So let's take a look at the ones that are currently on the website that I think are just terrible. They're like category five disasters. First up, Fringe. They take a perfectly good bag and they add terrible fringe to it. Fringe that doesn't match the bag at all. Like this beat bag in natural colors with bright red fringe. Or this beautiful beat saddle bag. I love the beat saddle bags. In classic black and they've added this bright yellow fringe. That would certainly work for Halloween. This bag I almost added to the on the fence category. It's not my style at all, but I thought what they did with it wasn't terrible until I zoomed in. They've painted a C on this bag, C for Coach, but it's in the style of the Disney font, because Coach collaborates with Disney. But when you zoom in on this hand-painted C, it looks like it was painted by a kindergartner. Well, maybe not somebody that young, but at least elementary school. It is so sloppy. It's terribly done. Shame on you, Coach, for creating this that way and then trying to sell it to people. It's awful. Next up, they've taken three small goods. It looks like a cosmetic case, a card holder, and some kind of wallet. They've attached some straps to the back and run a belt through it to make it a belt bag with small leather goods around your waist. The colors don't work together. It's hideous overall. Would anybody really want to carry a card case out in the open with your cards vulnerable? It's, it's just a really dumb design. This one didn't look too bad at first. I thought with this initial photo, hey, this could go in the yes category. But then I clicked on the image and there were two other images, by the way, most of these listings only have one image straight on view and you don't see the other sides or the interior. Fortunately, this one had a few more photos that show what a disaster it is. In this first picture, it looks like a wallet that they've embellished. Not terrible. It has symmetry, the colors work together. But then in the second picture, you see that there's a strap added to it, which is a little confusing for a wallet. But then in the third picture, you see that they've attached what appear to be two wallets back to back and then added a strap in between them and they don't match and it looks awful. This this next one could maybe go on the fence category, but for me, it's a fail. I could see somebody out there liking this bag, but personally, it's a no from me, and that's just because of the color scheme of it. What they've done with the design, adding these little diamond patches of leather, it's not so terrible. It's just the color scheme. It doesn't work for me. This, this is like the fringe. Whip stitching is just not my thing. They've taken a perfectly fine bag here, they could have just restored it and put it on the restored site. Instead, they ruined it with bright red, not matching, 
whip stitching. And now it looks like someone decorated this. It's summer camp. This beet bag illustrates something that has bothered me about Coach for a while. Coach has some customization options on their website, but when you go to customize, and in this particular case to add pins, little decorative pins, the layouts that they have available, you can't just put the pins anywhere. They have certain layouts that you have to choose from, and they're really bad. And by the way, I should have mentioned this up front, I'm an artist, so I'm trained in visual stuff and what looks good and what doesn't. So I can tell you from a professional artist perspective, this doesn't look good. The composition is all off. The beat bags, in my opinion, are beautiful. They're one of my favorite lines from Coach. I don't understand why they have to keep ruining them with things like this in the upcycled process. Oh, and this one. This is it's a Hudson or a Hayden, something like that is the name of the bag. Very pretty bag. I bought a smaller one at one point, but it was too structured for me, so I returned it. But very pretty bag, I love the design of this. Now Coach has a thing with varsity stripes. If you're familiar with Coach, you're probably familiar with that. They do varsity stripes on a lot of their bags, and I like that personally. But look what they've done with this one. First of all, the colors don't go with the bag at all, but second, they're just little pieces. They're not varsity stripes that go around the back of the bag. It's so sloppy. It looks like they were too cheap to put strips of leather all the way around the back. It's just horrible. I mean, seriously, Coach should be ashamed not only designing these things, but putting them out and actually trying to sell them to people and for the prices they're asking. It's horrible. It's shameful. And there's this backpack. Now this one I almost put in the on the fence category because it's maybe not so terrible, but I just really don't like patchwork. So I put it in the failures. Now a lot of these upcycled pieces or what they've used to upcycle the bags, they're made from scraps from other bags or from leftover materials. That looks really really obvious on this bag, and that's my big problem with it. It looks like, oh here we have a scrap of this, and a piece of this, and a piece of this, let's just slap it on this bag, and call it upcycled. And not only is it patchwork, but it looks sloppy to me. It looks like there was no thought put into this, but there should be on one-of-a-kind bags. The worst of all for me though, and I did mention this in that previous video about their new business model, this is something they do a lot in the upcycled bags. They take a larger bag, and then they take a smaller bag or a wallet and they just put the wallet or smaller bag onto the front of the bigger bag. It doesn't matter if they match or not. And I have to say, in Fendi's latest runway show, they did that as well, but at least their bags matched. And these are a few of the worst examples here. There are a couple that aren't so bad that are in my win section, but these are just really terribly done especially when the pattern on the pocket or the colors on the pocket just don't match the bag at all. They don't go together. What are they thinking? The people putting these together are supposed to be artisans, artists. They're supposed to have some sense of the visual, of design. Are they hiring first year art students and giving them unpaid internships to do this work? Is that what's going on? Except I was once a first year art student and I could have done a lot better than this. So who's making these things? And why is Coach allowing them to continue and here are three bags I'm on the fence about. This first one I think is called a Madison, and I'm not a fan of patchwork, so that's what I don't like about this. This piece has little patches, some of which have mushrooms, some have other things going on, but this isn't a bag that I would buy, but I also feel like it's on the fence of being not good and being not so terrible, and I could see somebody liking this and buying it. I do think the composition of the patches works on this one, so it does have that going for it. And the imagery with the mushrooms is kind of cute. This one I put in the on the fence box because I could definitely see an audience for this bag. Somebody who's really into Southwest or Western designs with the turquoise. And I love turquoise, but I don't like it like this. Within the Western, Southwestern genre of fashion, there are subcategories, and this is not my category. But just because it's not my thing doesn't mean they didn't do a good job with it. All things considered, it is a pretty good design, and it does work pretty well. This one is my favorite in the on the fence category, and it almost made it to the yeses, but there is something that I don't like about it, and this is why it's in this category. What I love is it has all these metal C's from buckles from different pieces Coach has made on a bag. I think that's a great idea for upcycling. However, I don't like how it was done on this bag. They're just kind of scattered on the top flap, and it's a composition issue for me. I don't think the placement of the C's works. I think if they were placed a little bit differently, it would work really well. I also don't happen to like the pink strap, but some people would, so 
there's that too. All right, now for my favorite bags in this category. They did actually have one fringe bag that I like, and I'm not a fringe person, and this isn't something I would buy, but I think this is very well done, and one of you might like it. It's this white tabby, probably called chalk at Coach, with this bright pink and orange fringe, which looks like it's in a suede, and I think it works really well. If you're someone who likes the tabby and you like fringe, I think this could be a great option for you, and especially if you like color. This willow tote also works really well for two reasons. They've added these leather hearts in the style of the tea roses, and the colors actually match the bag. They actually work together, and and they've put it in a composition that works. It's symmetrical, it looks nice. And let me clarify, I'm not saying that everything has to match, not everything has to be in the same color category, and symmetry is not always the best composition. But if Coach were to stick with those things, they'd have a better chance of success, I think, in the upcycled categories. Because one thing I've noticed about their reloved bag section is it seems like items tend to sit there for a while, like they don't sell very fast. And you would think that a Coach one-of-a-kind bag, specially designed by a coach artisan, would be a hot ticket item. But I think you're getting the sense of why they're not so much. This bag is also done really well. Now I'm of the opinion that the beat bags really should just be left alone because they're beautiful as they are. But if you are going to ruin one, this is the way to do it. They've added a piece of canvas in a pattern, in this case, going around the full top of the bag, not just being truncated prematurely. And this pattern in the color scheme actually works with the bag. Now they've added this weird pink woven strap to it. I don't think that works. And I remember seeing that strap being the sales section for a long time. So I bet they just had some extra ones laying around and they're like, let's slap this thing on there to get rid of it. But that strap is removable. So you could replace it with something that works better. As for the bag itself, two thumbs up. They did really well with this one. I mentioned the designs earlier with the pins and how most of them, in my opinion, aren't laid out very well. The composition is not great. But here are three examples where they really work. First is this quilted Willis bag. They've just taken little studs and mixed metals and lined them up parallel to the stripes of the quilting. And it works. It looks like it came out of the boutique that way. There's also this shoulder tote bag with three pins on the pocket. Now I have to say this is one of those designs where they've taken a smaller bag and slapped it on a bigger bag. But in this case it's more subtle because they're the same color. I didn't even notice at first that there was another bag on here. And they put three pins on the flap of that smaller bag. And in this case, I think it works. There's some symmetry, the colors work together. There's hardly any colors why they work. It's all very neutral. Not a bag I would purchase, but they did well with this one, all things considered. This one I would consider purchasing, the Mini Cashin. Very similar to that last one, it's black with pins. This reminds me of the Chanel bag. Was it called the Charms bag that had little silver and gold charms all over it? It's from a few years ago. This reminds me of that. It has pins that seem to have unrelated themes just scattered about, and the composition works because they're all pretty much evenly spaced. They're not clustered in one place and then a weird place over here. It looks good. That's one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is this bucket bag, and they have these in a few different colors with the same design, and they all look great. What they've done is woven some contrasting color leather to make some woven stripes on these bags. There's one in a green tone, one in a blue tone, one in a yellow tone, all on a white bag. And again, these work in a way where they look like they came out of the boutique that way. And I'll show you two examples of the Varsity Stripe done well. This one on a beat saddle bag. It's a black bag with blue stripes. It works. The stripes go all the way around. It looks like it was designed that way. Well, it was. It doesn't look like a bag you'd find at a craft fair. And this one, this is an example of the backpack done well. The varsity stripes weren't there before, but you'd never know it. They've added them to make this upcycled bag. The colors are deep and muted to match the color of the backpack, and it works. Now, if only they could continue in these designs that are the winners. It just doesn't doesn't seem that difficult to me as someone trained as an artist, but hey, what do I know? I've only been making, studying, or teaching art my entire life. What do you think of these? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What did I hate that you love? Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you back here soon, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.